We're rolling! Welcome to this week's edition of the latest in hobby robotics. My name is Fritz Lüneborg from Denmark in my workshop in Denmark. And on my left I have my good friend Andrew. And we're working on robots together across the globe. Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny. We talked a little bit about last week about uh, you know how widespread hobby robotics has gotten and uh, here's a good example we have a, a project going on um, where uh, a gentleman by the name of Marcus uh, developed he, he, he posted out there he wanted to build something a robot a uh, most advanced amateur humanoid robot and he wants it to be as uh, advanced as Honda's uh, Asimo which is is pretty advanced robot so but, what, uh, what people are doing here is they actually they're taking individual projects from around and they want to put it together to one big mother robot yeah yeah so somebody somebody's done a good uh, hand gripper and let somebody else has done uh, you know a uh, good mobile platform and they want to combine all this so he's got a, a bunch of different people that he pulled together they're brainstorming ideas they want to uh, you know pool their talent and uh, come up with good electronics he's got some people good with electronics other people good with hardware um, and uh, Marcus said, oh, "Okay, let's let's build the most sophisticated robot we can. Let's design one and build it together." He's got around eight people involved at the moment, and uh, they're still in the brainstorming phase, as I said. But uh, you know, <clears throat> it, he wants to see how it develops. He's hoping uh, hoping it'll go far. It's an interesting project. Speaking of uh, talented people, uh, a guy that uh, we've been talking mentioning a lot here in the show is uh, Patrick McCabe. I don't know why he keeps coming up because there's so many talented people out there and there's so much cool, so many cool projects. Uh, but uh, here he is again. I'm sorry, and I'm glad to present another project uh, of Patrick's. He just took a, a remote control car and and basically made it drive by uh, a GPS waypoint, right? Right. The reason why? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. You go ahead. Oh uh, no. So he, yeah, he's got. Um you know, there's a lot of uh, there's you can get these little, you know, little GPS units. They're small, lightweight, and you can they're available. They don't cost that much anymore. He integrated it in, and uh, you know what's better even than building it is he, he put good instructions together so somebody else exactly. Can, uh, <clears throat> That's what I wanted wanted to mention that he uh, he made uh, uh, good instructions on how to uh, to make your uh, a, a vehicle uh, drive by GPS points. Um, and 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 I want to recommend these instructions. They're they're, they're very good instructions, and um, it's a, just another example of of uh, good pe people, very talented people, uh, sharing and inspiring each other and uh, collaborating, making huge projects. What was his name? Avant GPS. Uh, he made uh, a, a GPS. A, yes, yeah. he made a UAV. And yes, go ahead. Nah, you know it's. Uh... You know, it's just another great example of uh, how you can uh, you can throw these things together and uh, with a little knowledge, a little hard work, and uh, and develop something really cool with with a basic platform. Apparently, uh, a rather simple project, but it I mean depends on how everything's relative because it's very complex. You're making something that fly by itself. Speaking of that, um, I have here uh, this one. It's I don't think you can see this because I can't have it in here. But this here is maybe you can see on top. Oh my God! Everything's falling down. Up here, <laughs> here's here's another GPS up here on the top of this one, and this is a multi-copter, a hexacopter from. Um, it's it's made mainly by a kit from uh, Microcopter. The B. No, it's very very cool. Uh, it's very very pricey and it's rather complex and. Uh, there is uh, coming some, uh, some some new kits out there and some, some new multi cups that you can buy. Stuff is happening, you know, these things, can you see this, Andrew? Uh, yeah, looks like a little tiny battery. Little tiny, and these things can make uh, planes fly, uh, and we've been using these uh, for ages. It's a LiPo battery, obviously. But now, if you start playing around with this size compared, you get a lot of power up there, and you can do some very interesting stuff. This is a huge thing. I'm not. Yeah, so, I'm not into. So, uh, the, yeah, it's just, it's uh, uh, 20c and and uh, 40c in burst. I'm not into what that means, but I just know this <laughs> this thing can can like drive a small car or something. Then so a lot of a lot of power in a small lightweight package, right? Yeah. 
It's, uh, yeah. But the only thing you got to, if you, uh, so LiPo batteries is another thing that uh, is great for hobby robotics because you can, you, if you, if you don't have a big robot but you want it to last a long time or it needs big motors or you want to make it fly, then a uh, LiPo battery may be the way to go. Yeah. But you do have to be careful with charging them, right? Yes, they're very complicated to charge, and I'm not going to go into that here. That's way beyond the uh, the content of this show. But uh, my point is that uh, we are going to see some very interesting flying machines, uh, and and we'll have some reviews on uh, on new flying stuff in the coming shows. That's the robots it. have taken to the air. Robots everywhere in the air, in the water, in our heads. I want a chip in my head. Can you get that? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I love that. 